there will be spoilers ahead for Black Mirror seasons 1 through 3. In Men Against Fire, we follow Stripe, a soldier who is sent on his first mission to track down a potential roach problem. Oh, by the way, roaches are vampire zombie-looking monsters that the military targets and eliminates. Stripe is equipped with Mass, an implant that helps with his intel, targeting, comms, etc. After his first two roach kills, Stripe looks into a device that one of the roaches dropped. A signal from the device interferes with Stripe's Mass implant and turns it off. Stripe becomes woke and discovers that Mass makes normal people look like monsters to the soldiers. Stripe refuses to participate in genocide, but is given a choice between having his memory of his revelation erased, or repeatedly reliving the memory of his first two kills with no roach filter. It appears Stripe chooses the memory erased option as he returns home to a life that is also an illusion. And we're all left with that familiar feeling of existential dread. In the book Inside Black Mirror, the series creator Charlie Brooker explains that the title Men Against Fire came from SLA Mar Marshall's 1947 book, Men Against Fire, The Problem of Battle Command, which talked about the low percentage of soldiers who actually fired their weapons during the first two world wars. And so what Arquette tells Stripe has some basis in reality. I was struck by the effort the military has to go to. The problem is that people don't want to pull the trigger. So what's the solution? Dehumanizing the enemy. In Men Against Fire, Mass is referred to as the ultimate military weapon, as it conditions the soldiers to perceive their target as a monster. Monster, while also numbing their senses as it alters their hearing and removes their ability to smell. Mass does a successful job of dehumanizing the enemy as well as turning the soldiers into machines. It's clear empathy is the main reason soldiers will not fire their weapons. To me, the more interesting aspect of this episode is not about how they're getting men to fire their weapons, but why they want them firing to begin with. First, let's examine the video of Stripe signing up for the mass implant. It's never said how old Stripe is, but based on his overall attitude, clothing, and vernacular with the usage of the word dope, we can safely assume Stripe is young and naive. Stripe refers to the contract as a whole essay and clearly didn't read it. Stripe is a representation of young agreeable army recruits without direction, recruits who don't understand the full extent of what they're signing up for. I don't know exactly how Stripe ended up in that room. Maybe it's his country letting the price of college tuition skyrocket to an obscene amount in order to financially ruin Stripe and his entire generation by convincing them to sign on to a debt the size of Alaska the second they turn 18. Then the government presents a solution to the problem they caused by offering to pay for his generation's unresolvable student loans with mind-numbingly high interest rates by simply joining the military and becoming another cog in the machine to aid in a war they don't fully understand. But then again, that's just conjecture. Also, sorry for the run-on sentences, I couldn't afford a higher education. Regardless, the subtext of this scene is that the military is preying on the young and naive. It's clear Stripe had no idea what he was agreeing to. He was as clueless as we all are when we check the box for the terms of service agreement on any social media site. If they do a good job in the field, Mass gives the soldiers sexual experiences during sleep. These dreams of beautiful lovers and picturesque houses are hinting at a life promised to the soldiers after their service. If they help secure a future for the next generation, their reward will be a prosperous life. The Mass system itself is a good representation of the way we the masses consume media. To me, Stripe's interface shutting off felt like somebody turning off their smartphone for the first time in, I don't know, a million years, and suddenly being free of all this misinformation that's constantly being thrown at their face. Catalina tells Stripe about the way the public's perception was changed by the information they received through their TVs and computers, so it's clear their government has a pretty good grasp on creating effective propaganda. When Stripe asks Catalina what the civilians see when they look at the roaches, Catalina responds with what you see now, confirming that the villagers don't have the mass implant. The civilians civilians do not see the roaches as the monsters the soldiers see them as. Instead, the civilians see the roaches as the monsters the media portrays them as. Corporations, governments, and other larger entities can thrive by pitting us against each other. Instead of blaming those in power for the problems they're causing, we're all convinced to turn on each other and blame our problems on other people. People who are just really not responsible for the decline in your quality of life. Mass is the soldiers' conditioning and news media is ours. 
This constant flow of misinformation helps turn off our empathy and divides us. The news and other social media sites generate constant fear and hysteria as you're repeatedly told this group is the issue, or this group is the issue. The point is, it could be any group, based on their race, religion, country of origin, etc. In the book Men Against Fire, The Problem of Battle Command, one of the ways they increase the fire rate of the soldiers is to have the soldiers fight for each other rather than the bigger cause. So basically, if empathy is the reason they don't want to kill, they utilize the bond between the soldiers, and have them fight to protect each other or even avenge each other. They are able to dehumanize the enemy by weaponizing the soldier's empathy. This tactic can be applied to the citizens by scaring them into thinking their family, loved ones, or community are in immediate danger because of some external threat. Once you've convinced someone that this threat is harming the people around them, it becomes almost impossible for that person to comprehend why anyone else would view said threat as is not evil. They're able to dehumanize the enemy while still operating off empathy. It's just that their empathy is rerouted in a certain way. This kind of deceptive information is absorbed by the adults but inherited by the youth. In Men Against Fire, the civilians are told the roaches are the issue. Manipulation of the masses allows for emergency power. The civilians give up their personal freedom as they're promised a better life for the future of their bloodline. This allows for the military to operate with complete impunity. When at Heidecker's ranch, Ray sings the song Anyone Who Knows What Love Is by Irma Thomas. Quick fun fact, this song has made an appearance in season 1 and season 2 of Black Mirror. Abby performs the song on the show Hotshot in 15 Million Merits, and Beth sings it during Karaoke Thursday in White Christmas. Black Mirror is less technology bad, and more about humans finding a way to corrupt technology that could have been pretty helpful to humanity. The use of Anyone Who Knows What Love Is is a perfect representation of that very thing. In this song, Thomas sings about compassion, and loving someone unconditionally. But like the technology, the song is misused by humans. Ray takes a song that emits empathy and compassion, then uses it to taunt Parn Heidecker. To me, the darkest part of the scene is Ray's inability to see the truth. She wants to kill a man who's protecting the monsters, when in reality, she's the monster who's hunting the innocent. Thanks to Mass, she feels so justified in her cause that she entertains the idea of taking a civilian's life, and later talks about burning the entire forest down if it means getting rid of every last roach, compromising the safety of the people she is supposed to be fighting to protect. Parn Heidecker hangs a cross on his wall, signifying that he's a man of Christian faith. Medina mentions that he must value all life, referring to one of the seven virtues, charity. Medina tries to reason with Heidecker and convince him to give up the roaches. She says, every roach that you save today, you condemn God knows how many to despair and misery tomorrow. During her speech, you can briefly see a painting called A Converted British Family Shelter a Christian missionary from the persecution of the Druids by William Hullam Hunt. A painting that shows a family harboring a Christian missionary as another is being taken away by an angry mob. In that painting, it's the people protecting a Christian missionary, and in this episode, it's a Christian protecting innocent people, signifying that history repeats itself but for different reasons. Men Against Fire serves as a warning for the way we receive information through any of our devices. Larger powers that control we see can manipulate our empathy to help forward their own agenda. With new tech comes fresh tactics to prevent everyone from seeing how they're repeating the mistakes of yesterday. So is Mass really creating a good life for the future of the bloodline? Spoilers! It's not. Arquette mentions humans are generally empathetic, and the villagers won't do the job of killing the roaches. By that logic, if Mass wasn't around and there was no military presence, the civilians would have a better chance of coexisting with the roaches. The roaches wouldn't be an issue if they weren't ostracized by their society. The crime is a byproduct of the military hunting them down. The roaches have to steal from the villagers as a means of survival. The villagers look to the military for help against the roaches, but the roaches wouldn't be a problem if the military wasn't targeting them in the first place. The profitability of war is something hinted at throughout the episode. We witness what appears to be a military-industrial complex. Besides the mass system, the soldiers are given advanced equipment like the boomer, translators, and drones. The military also has nice state-of-the-art facilities with coffee and stuff. This is juxtaposed with her falls and Parn Heidecker's ranch looking straight out of the 1800s. The roaches are having to scavenge through a housing project that's been empty since the war. 
Dang, really seems like that housing project would have been great for the villagers, but sadly it was just another casualty of what appears to be a pointless war. All of the money is clearly going into the military instead of the people who need it, the people who they're supposed to be protecting from a made-up threat. In the book Inside Black Mirror, the director of this episode, Jagab Verbruggen, claims the ending is left up to the audience's interpretation. However, my favorite interpretation of the ending comes from executive producer of the series, Annabelle Jones, who says Stripe has agreed to have his memory of the event wiped and the military have won. Stripe's tear is a hint of him having a sense of this. We intercut Mass's idealized version of the homecoming, white picket fence Americana with the sweetheart on the porch welcoming him home, and the reality of a rundown empty house covered in graffiti. The propaganda, military, and personnel continues. On his way home, Stripe passes a billboard for the Mass system. It displays a picture of a happy family on a nice beach during sunset. The only thing that looks good is the propaganda on the billboards and the dreams being fed to the mass users, giving them something as tangible as the digital items the cyclists purchase in 15 million merits. The reward for the soldiers is as real as the threat they're fighting. In the end, Stripe looks at his graffiti trash dumpster he calls home, and it's solidified that the promise is a lie. The only ones who benefit are those in power. So when it comes to your conditioning, are you awake yet, or are you still dreaming?